Hello, let's look at Conway's Game of Life, which is great fun. Imagine a grid with cells, and the cells are either alive or dead. The alive ones are black here. And there are rules that apply that cause the cells to change into other cells. And here's some examples of some patterns here. And uh, the rules basically boil down to this. A live cell with two or three neighbors lives on and any dead cell with exactly three live neighbors becomes a live cell. And there are lots of implementations of this game available to you but I've written one to show more examples of creating a user interface with Python, Jython, and Java Swing. So let's look at this program. So here comes this big grid. This is, um, I think it's 20 by 20. That's adjustable how big you want to make it. So you start by turning on some cells and then you can push step. So if you study the rules you can see what's happening here, why this changes according to this pattern. You can also use run and while that button is depressed it runs and does it four times a second. Um, let's try some different patterns here. So that one didn't last very long. Let's try this. That one's a little bit more interesting. Look at that one go. Well, that's kind of fun. Um, so you see that this is a grid of checkboxes. And this is done with swing. This is a J frame. These are J checkboxes. This is a J button. And this is a J toggle button. It's a special button that stays down when you click it. So for now, we'll just have a quick look at how this program works. And then in future episodes, we'll look at more of the details. The program is in two files. The main file is this one. And there's another file that is called Grid Mutator. And that file has all the logic for changing the grid from one generation into the next applying all the rules. So let's start with this and uh, line one here's a comment and lines three through six we're importing things that we use and this is often a good place to start in a in a program whether it be uh, Python or Java or Scala or others. Uh, you can kind of get a sense of what features the program uses from external elements. So we're using a J frame, you saw that. I'll show you the J panel, J button, toggle button, checkbox. It uses a timer to automatically update the generations four times a second. Um, so when we come back in future episodes, we'll talk about object oriented programming and what it means to create a class. But um, for now, think of it as a, just a way to organize your functions. And when your functions are inside of a class, they're called methods. And um, so let's start at the bottom. This is where we create the life game with a grid of 20 by 20. And then we call the method start GUI. So creating the life game looks for a class called life game, which is here. And when it calls start GUI, it does this. So we'll take a quick look at what start GUI does. And first it has to build the GUI. It makes the J frame and it creates a panel with a grid layout. Uh, before we used a border layout, remember the north, south, east, and west, and center. A grid layout is just um, something by something, like 5 by 5 or 20 by 20. And then this line here creates all the checkboxes at once with uh, kind of fancy construct from Python that we'll talk about more later. And this creates a grid that represents whether the cells are alive. And this adds all the checkboxes to the user interface. And this adds the grid panel to the frame. And um, you notice there were two buttons. And the buttons are side by side. There's a step button and a run button. And so we create these buttons here and add the buttons to the button panel. 
and then add the button panel to the south part of the border layout. Now before we set the size of the frame, I think it was 300 by 200 or maybe 150. Um, here we're not doing that because we want to be able to, let me show you an example here, we want to, let's say we want to have a 5 by 5 grid. We want the size of everything to be right automatically. So notice this J frame is just the right size to hold a 5 by 5 grid. And if we change to a 15 by 15 grid, then it's just the right size for that. And what does that is this pack. We tell the frame to pack itself and it does that based on an examination of what's inside and what are the best sizes for everything inside that. Once we make the frame visible then the game appears and we can check the checkboxes and then at some point we are going to push either the step button or the run button and uh, that's going to call either step or run. So let's look at those. Here's step and um, so now you can see what happens when we mutate the grid from one generation to the next. And Remember I told you there's another file with the grid mutation logic and so we use code in that file to generate the next version of the grid. And then we, based on that representation of the grid, we select all the checkboxes according to the new generation of the grid. That's what step does. And uh, when we run, we have a timer that runs. And the timer is created here. And 250 milliseconds is the interval. So four times a second, we're calling our step method, which you remember from here. So when you run, it's just like clicking the step button over and over again, but four times a second. Okay, so that's the a quick overview of this main file. And um, now the grid mutator, what does it have to do? It has to create a new grid from the old grid. And the way it does that is by applying the, the rules. So um, just going over this quickly, this creates a new grid that's going to be set based on the state of the current grid and the rules. And so what we do is we go through and look at every cell and we count the neighbors of the cell. And then we set the cell in the next grid depending on what the neighbors is set to. And uh, I'll explain this long expression um, in the future, but this is where it decides whether or not a cell is to be on based on whether it's on now and how many neighbors it has. And then this method here, count neighbors, counts the neighbors. Uh, a cell can have up to eight neighbors um, above and below and to the side of it. If it's up at the top left, it won't have a neighbor to the left or up above it. So this counts the neighbors and then returns the number of neighbors. So let's just watch one more time. I'll make an interesting pattern here. We'll see what this does. And we'll run that. So the timer's running. Okay, well that one didn't last very long. All right, so there's your quick overview. We'll look at more details later of a Conway's Game of Life implementation in Jython using Swing. So come back to future episodes to learn more about how this program works.